Hello, welcome back. After a few months of pause, we are again with the 6502C assembly videos following the book Assembly Lines. In the last video, we covered chapter 15, which was the last chapter of part one of the book. So today we start with part two of the book. And part two, we'll talk about how to call assembly programs from basic. And then we're going to have a lot of chapters on graphics. And we cover some advanced techniques by the end of part two. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Chapter 16 is about calling assembly from basic programs. Because some things are just easier in basic. For instance, if you wanted to simply get user input to some variables and print things to the screen, then of course basic is as efficient as assembly, but much easier to, to write and maintain. However, if you have a routine that does something special that you cannot accomplish in basic, or otherwise that you need performance, then you have to do it in assembly. And ideally we use the right mix of the two. So the first simpler way that we can call an assembly program from a basic program is using the, the call function. When we click the execute button, what it does to us is run this, uh, basically uh, this, this command called call with an address six, uh, 768, which is the, the decimal for hexadecimal 300. That's where our program is. Uh, and, and here, although this program says chapter 16, exercise one, we actually do know this program back from chapter six, sound generation. So this is the program where we put a pitch on address hexadecimal six and a duration on hexadecimal seven. And because this is a byte long, each, the pitch and duration, we can put a value between 0 and 255. And then when we call this uh, subroutine, basically it's going to play the sound with that pitch for that duration. And right now I have some pitch and duration set on these addresses. That's why when we click here on execute and we have this call 768, we hear something. Let's take a look at a basic program where we could call this. So you see here we have a program where you ask for a certain pitch and duration and puts them in variables P and D. And then it pokes and the poke is the basic command that puts a value in a certain memory location. And uh, we are talking about location six, that's hexadecimal six. So we, we are poking the value of P, which is the pitch on location six, and we are poking the value of uh, D to location seven, which is the duration. And then we call 768, which is again, the decimal version of uh, hexadecimal 300. And then we should have our sound. And then basically we print a new line and we go back at the beginning. So we do this in a loop and we can play multiple song, um, not songs, but the multiple sounds. So let's uh, take a look at this. So I'll put pitch uh, 80 and duration 50. You see this uh, double um, question marks is the second parameter because we asked for two of them, the P and the D. So now let me raise the pitch and raise a bit the duration. Now let me further raise the pitch 
and the duration. So I'm going to control C to exit this. So you see, this is the first example of how we can call uh, an assembly program from basic. I'm going to show you another way that we would like to call a assembly routine without having to individually poke each one of the variables. We want something like this program. So you can see this is pretty much like the previous basic program, but the difference here on line 20 is that instead of having to first poke PND to known locations, we simply want to call an assembly subroutine that's located at uh, memory position decimal 768 and pass the variables p and d. But to accomplish that, we need to make some changes to our assembly program. And here is the assembly code to do that. I have typed it offline. And the secret here is this routine called combite. So this is a monitor subroutine that is actually used as part of interpreting commands like poke or hcolor or other commands that take a numerical value or a variable value and need to set the value of some position in memory. So this subroutine which is part of the monitor, it's something we can call. And what it will do is starting of where the character currently is. And in our case, let me show the program again. In our case, we just call 768. So our character, the next character is this comma. So this combite will compare if the next character is a comma. If it is, it will skip the comma and then goes to the next exp character, actually to, an, to the, the, the next expression. So this could even be some math expression, like we could do like P minus 10, and that would be valid. So it will solve that expression. It will take the numerical value that's the result of that expression, and it's going to uh, put this in a known location. So to be more specific, it, it's going to put this in the X register. So it checks character by character, skips the commas, solves expressions, like in this case, the variable P, and puts the value in the X register. And from the X register, we can store it to the address to the memory address where we want pitch. So you see the beauty of this is we are not leaking information about the position of our variables in memory between assembly and basic. The only thing we need to know is of course the memory position where the subroutine is because we need to call that thing. But other than that, we are just kind of passing a variable. So let me show you what happens here is we start our program, we call the combite routine, and then store the value in pitch. So this is going to be the value of P. And then we call it again and store the value in duration. And this is going to be the value of D. And they will land on these positions because we store them here. And then we, we just run the same assembly program that we had before. And here's the thing executing. you can see that it works. There is also another case that we did not cover here, which is when you want to store values that go beyond 255, and then you need to use not a single byte, but two bytes for every number. So chapter 16 of assembly lines explain how to do that. And I encourage you to go there and check the solution. It's a slightly more complicated variation of what you have seen in this one. And if you still have any questions, just let me know. 
and uh, I may make an additional video for that one. So hope you had fun and see you next time.